Hi, this is Darius Zangani. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the ZFS Storage Appliance Advanced Services. The first service we're going to discuss is replication. Replication is used to replicate data between ZFS storage appliances. It doesn't replicate to third-party storage, nor does it replicate to uh, standalone servers. Uh, it's a licensable purchase. You purchase it per controller. Uh, there's no license fees per terabyte or anything like that. So once you purchase the license, you, you can replicate to as many ZFS appliances as you want, or as many as you want can replicate to this other one. There's no limit on that either. Uh, to create a replication partnership, you basically go into the replication service. Uh, you pick, give the name of the controller you want to replicate to, the host name or IP address of it, uh, with the, of the port that you want to access it over, and then the root password for the box. That sets up the relationship. After that, you go into shares and you can set up your replication jobs. So replication jobs can be set at either the project level or at the individual share or LUN level. Typically, they're set up at the project level just because usually you want to replicate a whole series of file systems together, but not always. It just depends. Uh, so once you're inside a project, you can just simply click on the replication tab, click the plus, and then you choose the specific settings you want in you know, regards to what array you want to replicate to, what pool, how much bandwidth you want to use, if you want to put a limit on it or not, uh, whether or not you want to use SSL, uh, if you want to include snapshots that are on the box to be replicated as well, so you can restore from those in the remote site, you can do that. And then there's two types of update frequency available. You can either do scheduled, which is basically I want to update after the first initial send every half hour, every hour, day, week, or month. Uh, and you can create multiple schedules, by the way. You're not limited to just to one, so you could have a couple different ones if you want to do that. You can also use another mode called continuous mode. Continuous mode will keep the storage uh, replica, replica up to date as soon as it, po as it possibly can. So that's replication in a nutshell. Next, we're going to move on to snapshots. So snapshots are another advanced service feature of ZFS. There's no um, service to turn on or anything that's set up inside the Configuration Services tab. It's just always there. It's always on, on either the directory or the share level. Again, you can take snapshots. These are point-in-time copies. So initially, when you first take them, they take no extra space. Uh, the only time they take extra space or unique space is when something changes since the snapshot was taken. Um, the way you create, take a snapshot is simply clicking the plus and saying, let's take a backup. There we go. So it instantly created, took the snapshot. It's now available. You can also create schedules for snapshots, just like you can with backup jobs. You can see here for this part, this project, home directories, we have a schedule set up that, that takes a snapshot every day at 1 a.m. in the morning and it's keeping 30 of them. So that way we would have 30 days of backups on this snapshot. The next service we want to discuss is a combination of services. We want to talk a little bit about Active Directory and then also SMB. Active Directory is the way we authenticate Windows users that are coming in over the SMB protocol. So to add an Active Directory into the ZFS storage appliance, it's really simple. You click Join Domain, put in the domain credentials, and hit Apply, and then this will join the domain. And now we can go in and get user credentials and then apply them to file systems within the ZFS storage appliance. Uh, one of the other neat features about Active Directory and SMB is another service we have called Auto Home, which is under the SMB service. Auto Home gives us the ability to create automated home user directories on an Active Directory server. So what happens is you set up a share, you come in here and put a rule of what share you want to use, and then this uh, ampersand side means to use the username. And so what will happen is it creates a folder uh, for each user. It allows Active Directory to do this. So you go into the Active Directory accounts, and a good AD admin can do this pretty easily. Uh, go in and fill these fields out for all their users, you know, with one script, pretty simple. Uh, but here's the mount point of that share directory over SMB, and then it has my username. And so, and it's connecting it to, it's mapping an H drive. So what that means is, whenever I log in to an Active Directory computer on this domain, it will automatically map this H drive, 
which you can see here. Um, so I can open that up, and there's my H drive, there's my home directory, so it's actually going to a folder, but it doesn't allow me to see all the other users' folders either, so that's all automated into the setup. But one of the things that's nice about this is, remember I showed you those snapshots, if I right-click on any folder of an SMB share in their snapshots, it'll go out to the ZFS, it finds all the snapshots, including the one I just took, uh, and so I can easily open that up. I can drag and drop files uh, from the snapshot itself um, uh, and do self-user restores very easily, which is a nice feature of the snapshot feature. Something else that's interesting is uh, you'll see over here, uh, it says that I have 564 gigabytes of total size, which, which you might think, well, that's a weird home directory size. That functionality is made available via quotas. So that's another feature you can take advantage with the SMB protocol is setting quotas for individual users. You can do it for other protocols as well, such as NFS. But if I go over here to the share, the auto home share, and I go to show all users that have uh, data or quotas, here you can see there's my Active Directory username, how much I'm using, and then there's that quota of 564. Another service I want to cover now is talking about uh, LDAP. So LDAP is another directory service. Uh, it's typically used to authenticate users from Unix or Linux systems. It all it works with our NFS protocols, NFS4, as well as protocols such as FTP, HTTP uh, ser file services. So you can authenticate users on any of those different protocols. In our case, our Active Directory server is actually uh, the Active Directory server as well. And so we're just using it as our native LDAP server. Well, thanks so much for your time.